Now that we have a good review of the natural logarithmic function, we are going to look at differentiating that function. When we take the derivative of the natural log function, the derivative is actually just 1 over x. And notice I've added two separate functions. The first one is just so that you understand that the derivative of the natural log is 1 over x, but quite often you're taking the natural log of some function, and if you do so, you need to include u prime. So this is just using the chain rule. So this is the one that you're going to use most often if you have the natural log of some function that has its own derivative. For instance, if I'm finding the derivative of the natural log of 2x, that says take 1 over 2x, but then also take it times u prime. So what's the derivative of 2x? It's 2. So that's why we're writing it this way. So instead of writing it sort of as a product, I'm going to write u prime. So if u is 2x, u prime is 2 over u, which is 2x. So that gives me the result of 1 over x. For the second question, I'm taking the natural log of x squared plus 1. So again, u prime, so u is x squared plus 1. So what's the derivative of u? It's 2x. So I have 2x over x squared plus 1. And then for the last one, I have x times the natural log of x. So this one actually is a derivative of a product. So if you'll recall, when we take the derivative of a product, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. We're going to take the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. That's that product rule. So typically I wouldn't write so many steps, but just to make sure we're all on the same page here. So here I have x, and then what is the derivative of the natural log of x? It's 1 over x. And then I have the natural log of x times what's the derivative of x? It's 1. So x times 1 over x is 1, and the natural log of x times 1 is natural log of x. So this is my derivative. Now that we understand what the derivative of the natural log function is, we want to talk about a process called logarithmic differentiation. And when you use logarithmic differentiation, you're not actually taking the derivative of a logarithmic function. However, you're taking the logarithm of each side and then finding the derivative. So it is going to include what we just learned, um, but it might seem a little bit counterintuitive, like why would we take the natural log of each side? But again, if I were to find the derivative of this function without using the natural log, what would it look like? Well, I would have the quotient rule, I would have the chain rule, I would have um, not the product rule, but I would have a kind of a lot going on in finding that derivative. So this is just another way to do that. So when we use logarithmic differentiation, we're going to start by taking the natural log of each side. So natural log of y equals the natural log of all of this. Now, instead of writing that step out, I'm just going to go ahead and write this expanded. So the numerator has an exponent of two. So I'm going to say two times the natural log of x minus two. And now I'm dividing, so I'm going to use the subtraction. And then this is obviously to the one half power, so I'm going to move that out front. And then x squared plus one. Oops, I forgot log. Log, natural log of x squared plus one. So that's how I would rewrite it using the natural log. And then I would take the derivative of everything. So the derivative of the natural log of y is y prime over y. The derivative of 2 times the natural log of x over 2 is 2 and then 1 over x minus 2. And then the derivative of natural log of x squared plus 1 is 1 over x squared plus 1, but then times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, but then I also have this one half out here. So I have 
this happening and the twos are going to cancel. So y prime over y is equal to two over x minus two minus x over x squared plus one. So from here, I would want to write this as a single fraction if possible. So I'm going to take the first expression times x squared plus one on top and on bottom and the second expression times x minus two on top and on bottom. And that's going to leave me with y prime over y is equal to, this would be two x squared plus two minus x squared plus two x all over x minus two x squared plus one. And then again, just more math. So y prime over y is equal to, let's go ahead and simplify that. So I have a two x squared minus x squared, oops, which would make it one x squared. And then I have plus two x and plus two. And in my denominator, I have x minus two x squared plus one. The numerator unfortunately does not factor. Uh, so the only thing left to do is I want to find whatever y prime is. So basically I'm multiplying by y on each side, but I'm not going to leave it as y. I'm going to replace y with the original function. So y prime is equal to x minus two quantity squared over the square root of x squared plus one, or I'm just gonna write x squared plus one to the one half. And then times all of this, right? So times x squared plus two x plus two times x minus two x squared plus one. And then I'm just going to simplify as much as I can. So my final solution is x minus two, just to the first power, because I'm going to take one of them away. And then x squared plus two x plus two. And in my denominator, I have x squared plus one to the one half, and then to the first, so I have x squared plus one to the three halves. Before we continue logarithmic differentiation, I just wanted to show you the work for that exact same question if I had not used logarithmic differentiation. As you can see, it's still quite a bit of work and there are a lot of places for you to make mistakes. Um, a lot of students get stuck right here when I've got this x squared plus one to the one half, and then I've got x squared plus one to the negative one half, and how do I deal with that? And of course, I just multiplied everything by x squared plus one to the one half on both top and on bottom. But again, a lot of students really struggle with that, so it might be easier to use logarithmic differentiation. Um, but again, it's just one more strategy for us. But as you can see, going through all of the work, I did end up at the same answer that I got using logarithmic differentiation. Let's do a practice. So press pause, try this question using logarithmic differentiation, and then press play to see how you did. Again, the first thing I would do is take the natural log of everything. So I'm going to take the natural log of x squared plus one minus the natural log of x, again, because that was a quotient, so I'm subtracting. And now I'm going to take the derivative of everything. So y prime over y, what's the derivative of x squared plus one? It's one over x squared plus one times the derivative of x squared plus one, which is two x. And then the natural log of x is one over x. And then I'm going to do some simplification before I deal with the y. So I'm going to take this times x and this times x squared plus one. And that is going to leave me with two x squared in the numerator 
and then minus x squared and minus 1. My denominator is x times x squared plus 1. I'm going to go ahead and simplify that numerator. And at the same time, I'll go ahead and move that placeholder to the other side. So 2x squared minus x squared is just x squared minus 1. In my denominator, I have x times x squared plus 1. And now I'm going to, whoops, I've put the y prime on the wrong one. So y prime equals y. So now I'm going to write y equals, sorry, y prime equals, and then I'm going to replace x squared plus 1 over x. So I'm replacing y with the function of y x squared minus 1 over x times x squared plus 1. x squared plus 1 cancels, and I'm left with y prime is equal to x squared minus 1 over x squared. So that is my final solution. We're going to finish with the derivative of an absolute value natural log function. Um, and the good news is because the natural log is undefined for negative numbers and we know that the natural log of the absolute value of u means that we're not going to have any negative numbers in the absolute value, we actually are going to tackle this the same way we would if it was just the natural log of u. So for instance, here, cosine of x, I'm just using the absolute value of that function. So that means if I'm finding the derivative, so f prime of x, I'm going to use 1 over the function, so 1 over cosine of x, and then times the derivative of cosine of x. And the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x. So what is negative sine x over cosine of x? Sine over cosine is tangent, so this is negative tangent of x. So that is the derivative of the natural log of the cosine of x. Up next, we are going to integrate with the natural log function.